Harry's Wife, Part 94.23, Protect Free Speech. I made mention in Parts Passim of the Half-Sister, Half-Sister Smackdown, commenced by Samantha Markle's lawsuit, and I explained what that means in terms of the impact upon Harry's wife seen through the lens of narcissism. I mentioned, of course, that Harry's wife is going to have to deal with it in some way, and initially has, through her lawyers, been dismissive about it. However, Newsweek.com, with an article by Jack Royston, opines as to the perhaps the various ways that Harry's wife might be able to deal with the libel lawsuit that has been slapped upon her. The article has clearly gone and sought out the opinion of various legal eagles, or ball-washing bastards that I would see them as, in order to seek their views and opinions as to what might be done. And it is interesting, because the observations that are provided by the lawyers provides us with further insight into the narcissistic dynamic at work. Mr Royston's article tells us how Harry's wife could escape her sister's libel lawsuit. Now, as I've mentioned, Samantha Markle's libel lawsuit is a threat to control, as is any litigation towards a narcissist, and the narcissist will deal with it in one or more ways. Some narcissists simply ignore them. This is usually seen by lesser narcissists, not always, but often will do so, asserting control and nullifying the threat by ignoring it and having nothing to do with it. And that's why particularly lower lesser and middle lesser end up with judgments against them, warrants for their arrest being hauled before the court because of their sense of entitlement and lack of accountability and the need, for, need to nullify that threat to control. Their narcissism simply guides them to not turn up and ignore the legal process. Mid-rangers are more likely to fight. The reason being, first of all, they do have more energy and, greater, generally speaking, greater access to resource. Also, of course, they are very much of a victim mentality. I can't believe this person's suing me. Who do they think they are? What? Accusing me of libel? My truth will out. I will strike them down with my sword of justice, they will declare, in their high-handed, arrogant and sanctimonious manner. And therefore, they will repeatedly talk about what's been going on as a part of usually an indirect assertion of control. And because they can't believe, because of the delusion of their narcissism, that anybody could accuse them of failing to make payment or libeling somebody or behaving in an uh, inappropriate criminal fashion, they will talk and talk and talk in order to try and get rid of the proceedings. They can't believe that they could be accused of this. And because of the risk to the damage to the facade also, their narcissism not only drives them to try and nullify the threat to control by causing themselves to bring forth trumped-up evidence, um, manufactured evidence that they believe is real, but it also means it has to defend the facade because the presence of a criminal conviction or civil judgments, etc., damages award may well damage that facade. So the reaction of narcissists is different with regard to the presence of them. Mid-rangers might fight to begin with and then give up, either ignoring it or alternatively conceding in some way because their narcissism finds something else that's more important to them. Greater narcissists are more likely to use a variety of ways to either succeed in the lawsuit if they're bringing it themselves or to get rid of it. And they will do various calculated underhand methods, paying people off, using intimidation to secure it, the creation of evidence that is done in such a skilled fashion that it carries the day, rather than in the half-cocked fashion of a mid-range narcissist. And therefore, dealing with a greater narcissist is an extremely difficult experience, should you find yourself in litigation with one. When it comes, of course, to less from mid-range, there are steps that can be taken, and I have set out in my materials, how to handle an officer's court as the way that you can deal with that, and I regularly advise people in consultation as to the steps that they can take to navigate their way through court action with the appropriate narcissist. So if you find yourself in that situation, do avail yourself of my expertise. But what about Harry's wife? Well, the article by Jack Royston tells us, Harry's wife's half-sister is suing her for libel, and their father, Thomas Markle, says he is willing to testify, but the Duchess may seek to get the case thrown out. Now, of course, remember, 
The existence of this case is a threat to the control, and when it comes up on the radar of Harry's wife, the likely response from her is to nullify it by saying, this is completely without merit. It's the deluded rantings of my half-sister who's got it in for me. Her narcissism causes her to believe that Samantha Markle is the problem, doesn't allow her to see that she is the problem, and therefore, when she dismisses this lawsuit, seeing it as just basically an attempt to extort money from her, she honestly believes that. Harry's wife and Prince Harry have launched between them eight lawsuits since September 2019, which demonstrates the habitual behaviour of a mid-range narcissist and the intimate partner primary source victim caught in her thrall, and being suitably influenced also, to utilise litigation as a means to assert control, draw fuel, etc. But Samantha Markles is the first where the Duchess of Sussex is herself being sued. The complaint revolves, in part, around the Oprah Winfrey interview in March 2021, but some of the most damaging allegations described relate to a briefing Harry's wife gave her communications secretary in 2018. Jason Knorf was preparing to meet improbably named and disappeared into obscurity as part of the preparation of their biography, Finding Freedom. Harry's wife sent him background information, which included a statement that her half-sister had three children by three different fathers and lost custody all of all of them, allegations Samantha Markle says are false. Michael Kump, Harry's wife's attorney, said in a statement released to Newsweek, this baseless and absurd lawsuit is just a continuation of a pattern of disturbing behaviour. We will give it the minimum attention necessary, which is all it deserves. Thus, there is already an attempt to assert control by dismissing it, giving it barely any attention, treating it in a contemptuous fashion, with a great big side, issue, side order of projection. Here's how Kump could try to get the case thrown out. Freedom of speech. And this, dear viewers, in light of recent events, will perhaps cause you to have a sharp intake of breath. Amber Melville Brown, who is a very capable lawyer of international law firm Withers, told Newsweek, Harry's wife could frame the lawsuit as a SLAPP, S-L-A-P-P, -P, case, which means a strategic lawsuit against public participation. Ms. Melville Brown explained, slaps are seen as the enemy of free speech. Libel actions, which are perceived to have been brought not properly to vindicate a damaged reputation, but to silence critics and limit free speech. The laws are designed to protect free speech in connection with public issues, including statements made in or in connection with a play movie, television programme, radio broadcast, audiovisual work, book, magazine article, musical work, news reporter, or other similar work. Melville Brown said the claim against Harry's wife concerns statements said to have been made by her with the actual knowledge and the intent that the false information she provided to Mr. Knorf to the British communication secretary to the British Royal Household would be communicated to the authors and published globally in the book Finding Freedom and disseminated worldwide through the media. That would certainly appear to fit within the definition envisaged by the anti-slap legislation. So what's being said here is quite entertainingly is that what Harry's wife could argue is that the lawsuit brought by Samantha Markle is a restraint on the freedom of speech, and that Harry's wife wishes to protect that freedom of speech by alleging that the lawsuit brought by her half-sister offends the slap legislation that it's not about her vindicating her damaged reputation, but essentially is trying to limit free speech and silence Harry's wife as a critic. I'm going to pause for a moment and let you allow the import of that observation from Amber Melville Brown to sink in. Harry's wife is arguing that she 
has freedom of speech and that her sister is trying to limit it. Has your hypocrisy exploded? It is well known that Harry's wife has repeatedly, through her observations, sought to stifle free speech. Indeed, her husband thinks the First Amendment is bonkers. This shows the contradictory behaviours whereby Harry's wife is allowed to speak out when she wants and to speak of people in a derogatory fashion, as half-sister, other members of the royal family, but if you dare to exercise your freedom of speech to criticise her, you can expect the potential for you to be sued, complaints to be made about you, and attempts to have you cancelled. And there'll be many of you listening who are well aware of victims of this behaviour only very recently. Now, understand, these are simply the observations of a lawyer about what Harry's wife might do, and it's not to be said that she is actively going to do that, but it is an option, and one could see that it could potentially be used in order to argue that what's being done by Samantha Markle is actually restraint on free speech, and if that happens, well, oh, the hypocrisy of an individual stating, I'm defending free speech, whilst that individual has repeated form for seeking to stifle it. The article continues by explaining Mark Stevens, also a very well-known and capable lawyer of UK law firm Howard Kennedy, told Newsweek, I'm sure that they'll try to get rid of the case early by some kind of summary judgment motion, but I think the chances of that are going to be pretty remote. She can say it's protected speech, she can hold opinions about her sister, and she's entitled to express them under the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment. Mr Stevens identifying that, Ms. that Samantha Markle is able to bring a claim, and, however... Harry's wife will seek to defend it by saying that she is entitled to express them under the Bill of Rights and the First Amendment, remembering the First Amendment that her husband describes as bonkers, and once again that she's entitled to express her views, but of course, as we've seen, other people are not allowed to do so because their opinions, based upon the evidence of her behaviour, are dismissed as being predicated on racist and hate-filled activity. The article explains statements not defamatory. Other options available to Harry's wife include filing a motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim. Melville Brown said, arguing could be made, for example, that the statements complained of are not defamatory. And essentially what she's saying here is that if you can argue before a judge at an early hearing that the statements on the face of it can't be seen to be defamatory, then she has no cause of action against Harry's wife and therefore the claim would fail. Samantha Markle's lawsuit states, Harry's wife saw Samantha only a handful of times, and Harry's wife has never had a relationship with either of them, Samantha or her brother Tom. This is false. Samantha spent time with Harry's wife on a regular basis throughout her childhood, and even lived in the same apartment house with Harry's wife for a period of time. Melville Brown said, Another argument may be that some of the statements only arguably amount to defamatory statements if the reader is aware of extraneous facts. For example, the statement that Sam and Harry's wife only met on a few occasions might only bear a defamatory innuendo, meaning as an allegation of lying to anyone to whom she has had herself held out as having a close relationship with Harry's wife. Publication Samantha Markle will need to prove Harry's wife's comments were published to a third party, but some of the more damaging statements were contained in a private email to her communications secretary. Her briefing notes to Knorf only became public years later, after the former palace aide handed them a November Court of Appeal hearing in a separate case about a private letter she sent her father. Samantha Markle suggests the Duchess is the original source behind statements and Buck finding freedom, though some of these arguments may not be straightforward to make. Melville Brown said there are issues of publication to contend with given the rather complicated journey that the statements may have taken from Harry's wife's fingers to the ears of the public. It is said that Harry's wife published statements to her communications secretary, Jason Knorf, but with what intention? That the information be communicated to the authors of Finding Freedom? And if so, was it all communicated? In what manner? In the same format? And with what meaning? Countersuing Defendants in defamation cases can countersue to try to put their opponents on the back foot, but Melville Brown said she believes Harry's wife was unlikely to pursue this strategy based on Kump's statement, suggesting they would give the case the minimum attention necessary. She said, 
Issuing fresh proceedings is not for the faint-hearted or for the shrinking violet or anyone seeking to minimise attention. Rather, I would have thought Harry's wife feels she can just put as just as large a dent in her sister's allegations of reputation by defending her claim brought against her as she could do by launching her own litigation. The stakes. If Harry's wife cannot get the case thrown out early, then she may have to give a deposition and undergo disclosure of evidence, which could lead to more private messages being put into the public domain. Stevens told Newsweek, This case is bad news for Harry's wife. I suspect she'll win the case, but she's going to have to go through depositions, which will be painful and excruciating, because protecting almost any area of your life is almost impossible. It will be very wide-ranging and cynically calculated details about her life. Thus, the experts believe that there are routes that she can try and dispose of this case, possibly at an early juncture, but even if she does not, that she may well win ultimately, but there is a price to pay with regard to further disclosures. This demonstrates that there are routes available through the legal process for Harry's wife to nullify the threat to control posed by her sister's legal claim. But it also identifies that it isn't straightforward and there are consequential risks that arise with it. But it also, of course, does raise the prospect of yet more hypocrisy being demonstrated if, and of course only if, that route has gone down of alleging that she's entitled to make these comments and that she's protecting free speech. Something, of course, which will have you all shaking your heads in disbelief. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.